Hello. I wanted to talk about our elders. It's a subject close to my heart, actually, because I've just written a book called We Need to Talk About Mum and Dad. But really, we need to listen to them, hear what they have to say. So I interviewed my mother, but I was afraid that an old voice would be inaudible to some people, the way old people are invisible sometimes. So my daughter has spoken some of my mother's thoughts to remind us and to help us appreciate that old people are us or will be in the blink of an eye. Among the natural pearls of my mother's thoughts, I have scattered a few of my own grains of sand. Thank you. My mother. The light from the window hits her hair. It's white, alive like feathers, a downy crown, a pearl halo. Her dark horn rimmed glasses sit skew wit for battle for ears with her hearing aids. Her head is bowed, but don't be fooled. She's a little beaten, perhaps, aren't you, Mum? But not bowed. Do you think people listen to you? Uh, people don't listen to me when I have my husband when with me. When I have my husband with me, and, and he's, he's you know, more capable, more capable of, of hearing, hearing and seeing than I am, they address their remarks to him and not to me at all. It's as though I'm just, you know, <laughs> like a hanger-on somehow. But these things, you know, you, you have to deal with them in your own way, uh, fairly though, and not, not to, to the, the heart, heart too much. Do you think people know you as a person when they meet you, or want to? No, they don't know me because they didn't know me before. Before, before I, I had, had the accident. accidents, you know, I had. I had full faculties. I always held a very good position, and they do treat you as inferior. And after years of being in command of yourself and of oh, other people, people. That is hard to take. What happened when you lost your sight? Well, it was gradual, of course. And then one day you wake up and think, oh. oh I really am blind. I can't recognise people unless I'm up really close to them to see their face and... I mean, I have been able to cope with it quite well in a way. Um, the hearing, though, that was a great disadvantage too. I never I never really knew which one was worse, the, the hearing, hearing or the, or the eyesight. eyesight but, but I do still think it was the uh, eyesight. You will never meekly allow the years to put you in your place. You face the memories you exhume and the people who assume that time has damaged and deranged, that thoughts are adult, rearranged. You stare them down, these savages, these ravagers. Rage against the dying of the light? For you, denied your sight. The light died years ago, but you fight. You wage a constant war. You have forgotten how to retract your claws. You hurt the people you adore. But no one will ever say, oh, poor, oh, pitiful poor. So what would you say about pain or grief in life? Oh, pain or oh, grief. I found it a very good help listening to books. Uh, the grief. the grief, you can sort of deal with it somehow better. Well, at least I could. And um, pain is much the same way. In six months, I'll be 96. Um, but I haven't had to deal with exceptional pain, really. I don't seem to be able to cry at the moment. No tears at all. But I never cried very much anyway. My mother didn't cry either, actually. I never saw her cry. I heard, I heard her once cry, but I never saw her cry. The listening, you know, when you listen to books all the time. Oh, yes. So how is, how is that in your life? How, what's that like? Oh, it's just an escape, really. If you go to bed, lie there and the car goes to sleep, you usually think thinking, not of the pleasant You know, not of the pleasant things, but the unpleasant things, the, the things you could have avoided. 
Um, but I guess then you pick up this book and it vanishes. And so you're without any thoughts of the present situation. You just carry on and this make-believe of the books. It's, yeah, it's really wonderful. Do you think your books inspired you to travel and have adventures? I always wanted to do something different to the rest of the family. Of family, I guess, and uh, that's why I went out on my own. I uh, always wanted to travel. I didn't know whether I would have the opportunity to, but I did, and um, so that was really, really good. What would you like to say about life, like some w w wisdom like you would pass on to your grandchildren? Oh, travel, keep your eyes open your ears open and laugh a lot. Do you think people look at old people and they don't really see them? Oh, yes. I think that's very common. They don't see them at all. No. They're not funny. They're not, <laughs> they're not you know, they won't help them, help in, them life. in life and so forth. They're of no use. Really. And uh, yeah, I suppose it's quite true. We're not much use to anyone, really. And but our, our time. time has come, and all we do now is wait for the end and hope it's not too painful. <laughs> That's all. Tumbling in the grit of life should smooth the lesions and the wounds. Add gloss to drear and dross, luster to grief and loss. Because the pearl comes from the pain, we're told, when we grow old. <laughs> <laughs>